Today it's about time to showcase you a league filled with incredible talents all around. We are talking about Belgium and I am taking on Kortrijk as the club that I want to control during this rebuild because they are nowhere to be seen up until the last position in the league table. 16th as we speak with only 18 points after 26 games. Kortrijk is struggling more than anyone else. And honestly, I think... Don't hurt yourself. This is going to be one of the better rebuilds that I've done in a long time because I genuinely believe so many people have no idea about what's happening in the Belgian league. And thanks to watching a lot of games there and all around the world through so rare, I know of a bunch of players that play in this league that in the future will be getting some massive moves. So beware, we are going to be building up this club and creating something very special while showcasing the beauty of the Belgian League. Currently the side of Kortrijk has a couple of very interesting players in there. A couple that I actually know as well. So let's start off at the back, my friends, because we need to take a look at Mampasi. This right-footed centre-back from Russia is the highest potential player in the team, but he doesn't have a picture and that annoys me. He has a potential of 78. Now, that's not the one that I want to point out. Kadri, this one, is a very talented player, has shown great performances time and time again, and I know he could be someone that we can rely on moving forward, but again, no freaking picture. We do have a picture for Kana from, uh, from Anderlecht. He has been loaned into this team. Now, apart from those, I love the fact that Haruya Fuji is part of this team. Now, you might not know this, but I watched a lot of J-League like one or two years ago. And Haruya Fuji was one of the young talents that I was looking at and thinking, oh, he's quite decent. And now seeing him actually play over here, and he's actually putting in some great performances from what I can see lately. So they have brought in some Japanese talents, and they also brought in this Tsunoda guy, who also seems to be a quite talented player. But generally speaking, it seems like there are a lot of young players in this team, from what I can tell here. Some of them have pictures, some of them don't. But even if we were to rely on just these youngsters that we have here, we could potentially get something good going. But at the same time, we realize a ton of them are loaned in. And this club could fall apart in the second season. Asinski, Aldor, Kana. Davies, all these players are just loaned into the club and that obviously means trouble. As we move forward into the future, this whole side could fall apart. So we need to focus on the ones that we know are going to be sticking around and hopefully do, doing some good business with 5 million. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Well, I actually decided to make a couple of moves and we are looking at some very interesting ones right here. We have let go of a bunch of players. Silva, Chaluk, Bruno, Avenatti, Van den Berge, Heinen, all these guys have left. And actually, this team in real life right now, based on stats or up the tracking, I should say, has been playing the 3-5-2 formation, which is one I'm going to be tackling as well. And uh, now that we've let go of a bunch of players, I would like to bring in some very good ones. So let's get it going. Let's find some talents in Belgium. Starting off with a man that already got his goal contribution this past game week. Yes, we're talking about Luka Oyen, a very talented player joining us right now from Genk, one of the stronger teams in Belgium and a team that has so many talents I want to sign. A couple of that team but Luka Oyen fits our budget right now and he, he fits the formation 68 rated decent amounts of pace good dribbling this kid has had a very very long term injury multiple times so he is now back and fit and playing so I wish him the best at Genk hopefully things work out for him there but most importantly hopefully things work out for him here at Kortrai. Going ahead and signing the next centre-back of the team. I've actually let go of Mampasi. I can't have so many players with no faces in this team, man. So here we go. It is Mate Smets joining us 
from, I believe, is that Santruden? It might be, but this guy has been quite the talent for not just this year, but also previously. And he started off so young as well. He is now going to be part of our team. He's so well-rounded, could probably easily play in a CDM position as well. But he comes in at 19, six foot tall, Belgian player, straight away into the starting 11 of this team to play alongside Tsunoda and Fuji. Tsunoda 24, Fuji 22. Maybe we'll make some changes later on, but I absolutely love these Japanese players. So I'm going to be looking at bringing in players for positions where we have loaned players. So Davies, Ojo, and I think Kana as well. Up next is a man that is counted as a CDM, but can play as a center mid or a center attacking midfielder and already has 10 goals this season. I'm talking about Nicolas Matsin. Yes, this man is coming into our team now for Sisako plus 840k. I'm genuinely making the, the best out of the resources that we have right now in this team and utilizing any player I can give away. This guy is class. And obviously, he isn't Belgian. Not that I wanted to bring in just Belgian players. I'm focusing on the Belgian league and some of the best young players there. And he's definitely part of it. He doesn't play for any of the massive sides, but he is a very, very good player. Only 23 years old, six foot four tall, can basically play anywhere in midfield. For us, though, he's going to be rocking that CDM and controlling the game from that position. Nicolas Matsun, welcome. I am basically using all of the rest of my budget to go for this man because he has gone crazy in the past three months. This striker has gone ahead and gotten himself 15 goals and one assist for Club Bruges. One of the strongest sides, and I believe Brentford have already signed him for the upcoming season. I hope I'm not mistaken, but Igor Thiago, a Brazilian striker, has already been signed by Brentford. And who knows, maybe he's going to be the next Ivan Tony. As they let go of Tony, he is planned to be his replacement. 72 pace. 73 shooting, 84 physicality, six foot three tall, only 22 years old. And now he is part of our project at Kortrijk and has left Club, Club Bruges for it. But it did cost us a ton of money. This next one is our goalkeeper. It's Toby Layson, a player that used to be at Genk and was the backup to Martin van der Voort, the goalkeeper, the Belgian one that some of you guys might know that is moving over to Leipzig next season. This guy was sick and tired of waiting for his moment to shine and finally moved across and is getting playtime at a different club in Belgium right now where he is showing up and doing very well. So, as one of the more exciting young goalkeepers from Belgium right now, Leysen is the one I wanted. 21 years old, 6 foot 2 tall. And with that, the goalkeeping position is sorted and our transfers for the season are done as we do not have any more cash left. The end of the season is here, and as some of you might know, the Belgian league works in mysterious ways. At the, like, half point or a little bit later into the season, they break off into the championship, playoff rounds, and then I believe there is a relegation round or something like that as well. And as you can tell, in the regular season, we have come in into that 14th place. There are 16 teams here, and these ones, top six, and then the uh, six right after it, are making up the 12 teams basically so then you are still missing like four sides but basically battling against relegation i believe so we have not come in into any of these groups so we don't have anything to show for it but we didn't come last and i'm, I'm very happy with that because if you consider they are last in real life right now that is a nice achievement and we're slowly compiling some of the better talents of the league. Tsunoda was recalled, sadly, so Vazinski took over, but you can tell the team is suffering from the bad form and the bad performances, generally speaking, and hopefully Thiago has had a decent season. No, El Idrissi has just as many goals. Thiago also the same amount of assists as well. And then Thierry Ambrose, who used to be a big talent back in the day, is also here, who I haven't been able to sell, but Matsin with possibly the best performances this season and some growth in some of these players which is nice very very nice our defense desperately needs improvements we saw it based on last season's performance and since Tsunoda has gone I want to bring this man into the team someone that I brought in in a previous rebuild but this 
is a must buy. Jornis Spielers is one of the highest potential players in the league. So for that reason, he has to be part of our project. This is a center back that recently started getting playtime for Club Rouge. A tall lad, six foot two, now 19 years old. In real life, obviously 18 with decent amounts of pace, good defending, physicality, passing, dribbling, all those things attributed to a center back. It does sound very exciting. His future is very bright. So Aruya Fuji, Spielers and Smets, you guys need to step it up. And generally speaking, our team, hopefully, can push into the top 10 this season. I'll be very, very happy with that. But I also ideally would love to sell Ambrose just to cash in a little bit more. I was able to bring in one more player and this is one that looks very exciting as we speak. A French lad that is currently playing in the Belgian league. His name begins with Lemar, which is probably something that a lot of you guys still remember. Obviously, Lemar, the player that used to play at Atletico Madrid. I don't even know where he is now. He used to play at Monaco as well. This man has a Monaco shirt on in the picture, I believe. Felix de Marchal is going to be joining us here to replace Mehsatu. I wanted to bring in another midfielder that is very well-rounded. He's 70 rated right now, so that's a nice little upgrade. And I do want to play him a little bit further up the pitch as a center midfielder. So Matson is going to have to do a lot of the defensive work. He does have low pace as well. So this one coming in a bit more physical in terms of like the pace could be working well as a center midfielder. Hoping that this tactic works. If it doesn't, somewhere down the line, we might change formation. But that's my last transfer for now. Top 10? No, we are going for more. Kortrijk in the sixth position. Yes, which means... We're going into the championship round and take a look at what the team has achieved right here. 40 points, which means we come in third and I don't even know what you get to play then. Do you play Europa League qualification or is that us going into the Conference League straight away? Anyways, it probably means that we are going into European football, which is going to be immense for this club in terms of the budget that we're going to be given and the Pro League is looking very interesting for us right now as we have Thiago on an 83 rating. Il Idrissi needs to go. Kadri has gone up a little bit, but I actually would like to replace him with a different player. I have someone in mind. Denev as well, I would love to replace. Le Marshal up to a 74. Matson 77. That change to a center midfielder has been huge. We have Spielers on a 77. Fuji 72. Smets is looking solid. Oyen doing well for us. Lacing good stuff. So, guys, this team, we're building something special. And there are still so many pieces missing. But look at that. 35 goal contributions from Igor Thiago. So impressive. And the rest of the team has been stepping up to Luka Oyen plus five with 16 goal contributions. Let's keep this up. This next one is an interesting one. One I personally didn't know of because in the past five games, he all of a sudden has jumped onto the scene and has gotten himself four goal contributions. I believe two goals and two assists. This is Romeo Fermant. Now, he is from Club Bruges, but currently he is playing at Vestalo, if I'm not mistaken, which is another team that gives a lot of chances to young players. And I believe it's the same team from Nicolas Matsin, or was he from St. Ruden? I might be mistaken, but he comes in and he will replace, uh, replace Idrissi up top for us. This guy has pace, good shooting, right footed, high attacking work rate, six foot tall, seems to have complete package apart from the play styles right here so i'm very excited about that partnership potentially turning into something special but apart from that i don't really have that much money to spend maybe one more transfer actually i have one more transfer to make because i'm doing a swap deal jakob andreka this is another one that is currently one of those that you need to take a closer look at because he is slowly making his way into the team at antwerp Jakob Andrejka could be a big one for the future. He's going to be joining us as a right midfielder. 83 pace, 73 passing, 74 dribbling. In some of his last games, just in the last three games, he scored two goals and also got a penalty for his team where he was fouled and then they went ahead and scored from it. I'm very excited to have him in the team because he has four star, four star on him with a couple of play styles, which tells me this boy could be special. So high attacking work rate from Sweden. 
Welcome, Andreka. Season's done and there is a cup final that we're taking part in, which kind of excites me. What is it? Croaky Cup. Is that like the Belgian National Cup? Is that what it is? Stadion Olympique. Here we go. They have Jesus Ferreira and Livaja. Okay, or Livaja, I should say, because he is Croatian. He is not Spanish. Our team looks very good. Very good. And it still loses. Spieler scores, Andreka scores. Okay, so we did lose that cup final. Let me see how the league table is looking right now. Again, congratulations for getting it done. By the way, so many incredible teams in Belgium bringing out like consistent stream of un unbelievable talents. They need more respect on their name. They definitely, definitely do. But let me just quickly take a look into the league standings after this one. Okay, so regular season, we came in second. Just one point off the top. And in the playoffs, we completely bottled it, which is a bit of a worry. I don't know what the hell happened there. Did someone get injured? Is there an issue within our squad? I guess not. I mean, Vermont came in up to a 75. That's good. Kadri gone up to an 80. Initially, I was thinking of possibly letting, letting him go, but he's still going up. And I'm going to keep the boy. Andreka up to an 80. Oyen on an 80. Mats an 81. Le Marshal up to a 78. Defensively, I think Fuji made a huge leap. This team next season, it should be doing extremely well. And hopefully we do get a decent budget to go, to go along with it as well. I actually wonder, what did we actually play at the beginning of the season? It was Europa League. Oh, we even beat Inter. What the hell? And then what happened? Who kicked us out? February. Oh, Real Madrid, what are you doing in Europa League football? Okay, I mean, that makes sense. Next season coming up. Well, things have gotten quite interesting. Take a look at this at the top of the Pro League in the regular season. And bang! Championship round. First place. Champions League football secured by Kortrijk at this stage with zero draws and only one loss in the championship round. Incredible stuff from the team. And the team itself is being led by one unbelievable Brazilian 89 rated Igor Thiago. Fermont up to an 81, Kadri 84, Andreka and Oyen just going alongside each other with the ratings. Matson up to an 85, the Marshal nice growth. Aruya Fuji is trying to catch up to the rest of the defenders and he's doing a great job at it. Toby Lason with a lot of growth this season as well. And the bench obviously isn't that great. I am fully aware of it, but I just didn't have the funds. As these players are going up in their ratings and as the team is performing better and better, they're asking for more wages and I can't spend anything. We have Igor Thiago with 35 and 3, Fernand coming in with the 17 and 2, Kadri 15 and 3, Luca Oyen and Andreka doing their job on the wings. We are slowly securing a starting 11 that will be able to compete in European football. Not against Real Madrid, not yet. Can they please go? But ideally against some other teams and make it into the knockout stages. That would be huge. But coming in first now for the first time in the championship round, I actually do wonder what's going to happen with the budget. I just haven't been able to get any budget above like 15 million yet. I'm sorry, Kadri, but you have to go because this guy is the real deal. If I'm doing a Belgian league youth focused type of rebuild, he has to be really close to the top of that list. This is Bilal El Canus from Genk. Guys, this is someone that you need to watch out for. Like this is the type of player that a team like Brighton would buy and sell for so much money moving forward. This is the one. The guy already this season has four goals and nine assists. We are looking at a center attacking midfielder who truly could take his game to the next level in one of the top leagues in Europe. Somewhere like Germany would fit very well, but as I said, Brighton could be that team that brings in a player like this and just turns him into a beast. He is Moroccan, he has four-star skill moves, he has a three-star weak foot, he has flair, he should have a lot more play styles, that's for sure, but he's now part of our team. Kadri, I'm sorry, but this one was important to me. I am bringing in one of the most exciting players in the Belgian league as a backup striker. He can fight for his position if he wants to, but I don't think he has that high potential 
It's Kevin Denke from Cercle Bruges. Guys, this guy has been smashing it for the past two years. This season alone, I believe he has like 19 goals already. This is someone that you need to know. Kevin Denke now comes in as a backup in our team. Finesse shot, technical, aerial, 19 goals already, as I said. And he comes in at the age of 26 right now. Obviously, he is much younger in real life. But with that signing, I feel like we can go ham this season. In the regular season this time around, we came in in second, two points behind Club Bruges. Even though I'm buying so many of their great talents, we are going into the playoffs and realizing that we end up in first with a big gap above Club Bruges. It's a 13-point gap that we have created there. And that's not all. Lads, we are part of the Europa League final, which is huge. If you take a look at the round of 16, we got past Leipzig. After that, we got past likes, uh, the likes of Celtic. Then we have gotten past Lazio, 3-2 on aggregate, to now play Tottenham in a European final as a Belgian club. This is huge. Tottenham do have some great players in there. Very, very strong squad. Let's go and beat this one. Please, come on, Kodraik. You can do it. Yes! That is our first European trophy, starting off with the Europa League, going after the Champions League. Lads, 4-2 it is. Atemona of the bench, Thiago, has gotten a goal. Before that, he got another one in the 73rd, and then Thiago got two that actually counted in the 70th and 32nd. He is the dominant force, the most dominant force in our team as we speak. So I want to see his numbers instantly. I'm assuming 40 plus goal contributions this season. It is 45 and three, ridiculous. Igor Thiago. Mate, he's on fire. Bermant coming in with 24 and 1. Luca Oyun 23 and 19. El Canus first season. Outstanding. Andreka, a little bit on the lower side, but that's fine. We're going into the next year. This time, I want the Champions League, please. As we just beat Barcelona and Liverpool, and now we got past PSG in the semi final. Oh my god, it's actually happening. I didn't even think it was going to happen now. I honestly thought it would take us another season. I wanted it to happen, but still, this is amazing. We actually got past PSG, Liverpool, and Barcelona to go ahead and get into the final with this beautiful squad. Take a look at it. This is the team that has done it. Thiago, who is rocking up for Club Rouge as we speak. Permant, who's out on loan at like Bestelo and he's doing a great job lately. In the last four games, he has stepped up his game massively. El Canus, who is one of the brightest talents in the Belgian Pro League. Luca Oyen, who has always been renowned to be a great talent, but has suffered so many injuries and has now returned with a bang. We have Nicolas Matzin, who has been doing so well for his team in that midfield, playing multiple positions and lately playing more offensive and getting goals and assists galore. Le Marshal, a big talent joining into the Belgian league and getting playtime that he probably wasn't getting at Monaco. Then you have Andreka, who's now doing so well for the likes of Antwerp. Smets, who has been known for, to, for being a big talent in the Belgian league lately. Spielers, who is the next emerging talent from Club Bruges in that defensive position, next to the likes of Kiriani Sabi and stuff. And Fuji, who came in from I think, what was it, Nagoya or something? I can't even remember the team he played for, but he has joined this squad and I didn't know of it and I'm so happy to see him again. He's apparently my captain, which I didn't realize. And Toby Lason, who has been the backup to Martin van der Voort for such a long time and now has become the main man in the Belgian league. He's one of the brightest young goalkeepers in there. So all these players are now ready to take on our Champions League opponents, before we dive into the matchup against AC Milan, which I'm very excited about, let's take a look at the league. First place in the playoffs, first place in the regular season. The Crokey Cup doesn't belong to us, but that's fine. We're going for a massive double right now. And I want to see the stats. Oops, this is not the stats part. This is it. Thiago, zero assists. A bit selfish, huh? We have Fermant doing all right. Luca Oyen, great. Andreka has stepped up once more. El Canus has done well. Now, it's time to play against AC Milan. And I wonder who they have in their team. 
Darwin Nunez next to Rafa Leao, Diao on the right, Joao Neves, Benacer, Miller, don't know who that is, Theo Hernandez, Chia Botman, who was supposed to join AC Milan before joining uh, Newcastle, Parsons, a region at right back, and Magnon in goal. We can do this. And here it all begins, my friends. I had a good night of sleep. I'm prepared to take on AC Milan and just do my best for Kortrijk and uh, Belgian football. Oh, that's a good ball. Rafa Leao is using that sprint of his. Nicely done from our defense, I wanted to say. And it legit just switched to a player that I didn't want to switch to. <sighs> Man, is that Benacer scoring for them? I believe it is. Ismail Benacer, what a midfielder, by the way. We're 1-0 down after 11 minutes. That is not all right. Rafael Leao is way too quick. And I don't like the fact that he plays incredible crosses. Toby Leeson has to step in. Oh, that's a risky pass out the back, but it did work out this time. Here goes Andreka. Come on. Come on. Run, Andreka. Swedish beast. No way he saves that. Andreka with the cross. Beautiful header straight onto the post. Two big moments created by Andreka there. When that Thiago over and across now into the run of Vermont. He shoots and doesn't even hit the target. Vermont. Andreka on the run. Good one here. Down the right wing. We have an opening in the center. Thiago onto his left. Not. Not good enough. That has to be mine. Yes, it is. Waiting for the run of Andreka again. He's going to stop. Whip the crossing into Thiago. Oh, my God. Manyo, you need to stop. Haruya Fuji chasing it down for us. Fuji does his best. AC Milan in a really, really dangerous position. I can't believe that, man. What a joke. It's 2-0. This team does not deserve to be taken apart like that. It really doesn't. A little bit of space. Dude, Magnor is so annoying. Yes, solid tackle. Very, very solid. Vermont and the boys now. Andreka, I'm waiting for you. Andreka, please win that. Yes, he does. Andreka somehow keeping this on the pitch. Ridiculous performance from him there. As we go through on goal. And finally, get one back. Oh, Fervant scores for Kortrijk. 1-2. Milan, we're going to go for another one. Don't you worry. Be careful. Your defense is in danger. Rafa Leao inside. That's the first shot. He gets taken out. What the hell is going on here? Toby Lason with a big one. Please. I had to. I had to. Even if he gives me a red card now for Haruya Fuji, which he doesn't, I just had to take him out there. Otherwise, they easily score. And Marshall. Yes, El Canus. What a ball. What a ball by Canus. And yes, there we go. Bro, what a moment. 2-2 two, two it is. And honestly, it's ridiculous. We had so many chances. It's genuinely just down to Magnon being a beast that they have been able to not concede this many goals. But El Canus, his pass down the left to Luca Oyen for Ferman to finish that one the way he did. Oh, what a moment that is. 10 minutes to go. Oh, no. Don't play it just straight back into them. Toby. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being who you are. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes, Toby again. I, <laughs> I got to thank him now. They need to thank Magnol. I definitely need to do it for Toby Lason. But his move could be even more significant as we could be scoring off of this as we run down the right with Andreka. There's Fermont again. Into the middle. And we score with Igor Thiago. The Brazilian finally turns up in the last minute of the game. A highest rated player. Yes, what a comeback, mate. Oh, this final is definitely one of the best ones I've had in a long time. Down 2-0, come back to 3-2, and win it all in the last minute. Imagine, imagine pulling this off in real life. Ah, yes. Please, oh no, don't give him another chance here. 
they actually do get another chance. Oh my god, bro, I'm so nervous. I'm trying my hardest to not let these men shoot. And I said, Toby Lason again. Ref, blow the whistle for God's sake. It's five minutes into added time. I can't believe he hasn't blown the whistle yet. Dude, it was supposed to be only two minutes. Get it away. Get it away. Ref, blow the whistle. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Honestly, lads, this is just perfect. Some of the top performers in the Belgian league, all the young players compiled into one squad. It was so much fun. Haruya Fuji with his tackle where he took that yellow card on, a potential red card as well, just to help his team. It was all worth it. Thiago didn't do anything for 90 minutes and then he steps up to win it all. The story was a beautiful one. Thank you so much for watching. Kortrijk is now one of the best teams in world football. I'll catch you next time. Take care and peace.